All right, in the last video, we covered uh, what we're going to do inside the project. So this is going to be our project here. And in this video, we're going to do the initial setup. I'm also going to show you just kind of how I've set up the code. And then uh, we'll set up the initial column structure. So you can see this is a, a relatively modern um, marketing type layout. And we have a 12 column structure. So these are one, two, three, four, five. So there's 12 columns across. And then in between, the gap in between is 30 pixels. So in the end, we come out with 1530 pixels wide. So we are going to design this not for mobile first. We're going to just do a desktop type of design. But I will take you through the mobile styles and we'll figure out how to kind of go back and do that after the fact. So sometimes on projects, you what you get is a, a Photoshop or Illustrator file where this is what you have. You have the desktop and then you have to go back and figure out how to pull it down to a mobile size. So we're going to kind of go through that process of reverse mobile first. <laughs> so mobile second. Uh, but it's not that you're thinking about mobile second. It's just that you're designing for mobile second. And uh, often in my work, this is how uh, I get projects that come to me. So you have to be able to think mobile first. You also have to be able to think, how can I reverse this and make this mobile second? So let's get into the code and let's create our column structure. Let me first show you what I have here. Um, in the HTML, we have a, a grid wrapper, so we're going to use grid. And inside the grid wrapper, we have a header and then these different sections. So the hero, the features, the call out, the blog, the putter, right? So each of these corresponding large chunks of code. So we have one, two, three, four, five uh, sections. Well, six if you count the header. And then we also have one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Okay, so that's how that corresponds. I'm using Pug, what used to be called Jade. But all this is is kind of like CSS for your HTML. So you can see when you look at the, uh, the HTML as it's going to come out at the end, it's just normal HTML. So you have a header, uh, and then you have a section with the hero and then features. Okay, so this is all this is. You have a div with the class of grid wrapper. Uh, so after seeing this, you can kind of see what's going on here, right? So this is just uh, inside the header when I indent, I have a paragraph uh, tag around the word header, right? So that's what I have here. So I'm going to be using Pug. If you're not familiar with it, I believe it's a uh, if you just search for pug.js, like pug JavaScript, then you should be able to find uh, the code. Uh, it, it helps me to write code that's easier to read on the whole. This is much easier to read than this. And then it also helps me to write faster code because I'm not having to put the tags in and all that kind of stuff. So uh, all the benefits that you get with uh, using SAS, which I'm also using here, you can get with pug. Plus, it allows you to do all kinds of cool things like mix-ins and includes, just like you would with SAS or uh, LESS or any sort of CSS preprocessor. So what we have going on here is I have a basic Noto Sans uh, font uh, family going on. So I just changed the font family a little bit. And uh, I took the margin. So um, what is this? This is uh, CodePen. CodePen puts a, a small margin uh, into the body element. So I just took that off so that we can style it exactly like we want. And it will always go out to the edges, everything that we want to go to the edge of the viewport. Uh, first, we have to set up our 12 column grid. And then I have some uh, just some headers here. And we'll put all of the code for the specific parts uh, underneath the appropriate headers. So let's just go ahead and start with the grid. And the way that we do this is we, we find our grid wrapper, and that's where we're going to put our grid styles. And we say grid wrapper. <clears throat> and then we have two things that we need to set up. We need to set up the uh, columns and the rows. So the first one is called grid template 
I like to start with columns because it helps me to define the shape a little bit better. So grid template columns. Now each column in here is, is equal width. So they're all 100 pixels across. And then there's a gap of 30 pixels in between. So we'll just stick with that. And we'll, the way that we can do, uh, we could do 100 pixels like this uh, 12 times. Or you can use the repeat function, which means uh, you type repeat and then parentheses, and then it takes two, uh, two values. One is, or two arguments, I guess. One is um, the number of columns, and the second one is how wide do you want each column to be. Okay, so we could do, uh, sorry, we don't want 100. We want 12 columns, and we want it to be 100 pixels wide. So this will give us <clears throat> a 12-column structure with each of the uh, columns being 100 pixels wide. Okay. And then, um, let me see. Uh, let's do grid template rows. And then I'm just going to set the rows to auto for now. Uh, I don't think that we're going to need to do anything specific about them, but we could uh, if we wanted to. So you can either set the height of the rows here, or you can set the height of each particular um, element, which I think is what I would like to do is to just set the height on each element. And then there's a, a third called grid gap. So these, this is like the basic structure of, of CSS grid. Uh, grid gap <clears throat> means inside the grid, the gaps in between uh, each grid cell. Right, how much space is there in between each grid cell? You can think about it um, like a gutter. So if you're familiar with gutters, that's exactly what it is. Uh, if we only set grid gap, then um, you know, let's say we set it to one rim, then it's going to do both horizontal and vertical gaps. Inside of this, it's going to set to one rim. Oh, we will need that. So it's going to set them uh, to whatever that is, 16 pixels, because that's the root. Uh, that's the root. One one rim equals 16 pixels most of the time. Uh, so grid gap does horizontal and vertical orientation, but we are able to do uh, both at, or to change individually at the same time. So let's do. Um, let's go to my de facto guide here, which is at CSS Tricks. I just want to make sure I'm using the right syntax. So it is grid row gap or grid column gap. So we can uh, we can make those two different. So we can make the column the gap between the columns different, or we can make the gap between the rows different and what we want to make is the uh, column gap. Now we want the gap between the columns to be 30 pixels which is going to be roughly 2 rim but we'll set it precisely at this point. Okay so that is our grid structure believe it or not that's as easy as it gets and uh, there's no uh, need to do anything particularly crazy or special here. Uh, we're just going to go with this, and then we have our initial setup here with the body. And as we move along, uh, the next video will be the header, and then we'll focus on the hero, and we'll just kind of go down uh, the page. So thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next video, and continue through this series building uh, a complete website uh, using CSS Grid.